I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. The longest reigning monarch in British history, Queen Elizabeth II, has died peacefully at Balmoral Castle in Scotland on Thursday. She was 96 and served on the throne since 1952. King Charles III, the new head of state, said that his mother's death is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family, and her loss will be felt by countless people around the world. Of course, the very first signs of things not being okay came in the afternoon when the palace issued a statement saying that the Queen was being monitored by her medical team and the family members had rushed off to Scotland to be by her side at Balmoral. This was unprecedented which already told the public that all was not well in the palace and pictures that emerged just two days before when the Queen met the new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom showed her as someone frail and quite not her usual self. The Queen has been known for being this exuberant, larger than life, happy a persona of a grandma, loving and caring and has garnered a lot of fan following, not just in the United Kingdom but across the world. However, the reign of this longest serving monarch has come to an end today. An end of an era, says the Prime Minister Liz Truss, the 15th Prime Minister to serve under the Queen Elizabeth II. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. Our country has grown and flourished under her reign. Britain is the great country it is today because of her. She ascended the throne just after the Second World War. She championed the development of the Commonwealth from a small group of seven countries to a family of 56 nations spanning every continent of the world. We are now a modern, thriving, dynamic nation. Through thick and thin, Queen Elizabeth II provided us with the stability and the strength that we needed. She was the very spirit of Great Britain and that spirit will endure. Queen Elizabeth II created a special, personal relationship with us all a relationship based on service and devotion to her country. Nobody under the age of 70 has known anything other than Queen Elizabeth II on the throne. For the vast majority of us, the late Queen has been simply the Queen, the only Queen, above all else, our Queen. As we mourn her loss, we should also treasure her life our longest serving and greatest ever monarch. Above the clashes of politics, she stood not for what the nation fought over, but what it agreed upon. In crisis, she reassured us, reminding us that we are all part of something that stretches back through time, a symbol of the best of us. The Queen stirred the monarchy through turbulent times, with the end of the British Empire, the Second World War and many other political and global events that fundamentally changed the world. For seven decades, she relentlessly carried out her duties, hundreds of official engagements every year that included hosting heads of state in the United Kingdom, opening new sessions of parliament, charity events, award ceremonies, high teas and parades. Tributes poured in from across the world, including from Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, American President Joe Biden, the Pope, James Bond and even Paddington Bear. Fans continued to crowd outside royal palaces to lay flowers and light candles for a queen much loved. Her reign best understood in the words of Simon Armitage's poem, Queenhood. An old-fashioned word coined in a bygone world. It is a taking hold and a letting go. Girlhood left behind like a favourite toy. Irreversible step over invisible brink. A new frock will be made, which is a country hemmed with the white lace of its shores. 
And here is a vast garden of weald and wold, mountain and fell, lake, loch, coombe. It is constancy and it is change. The age of clockwork morphs into digital days, but the song of the blackbird remains the same. Queenhood, a long winding procession from the abbey door to the abbey door. Queenhood, vows taken among Bibles and blades, beneath braided banners and heralding horns. The anointment of hand, breast, head, with oil of cinnamon, orange, musk and rose, promises sworn in secret under tented gold so daylight won't frighten the magic away, too sacred by far for the camera to see. It is an undressing first, then a dressing up, a shedding of plain white cloth, then the putting on of a linen gown and the super tunica, dazzling gold foil, lined with crimson silk. Man will walk on the moon, great elms will fail and fall, but a knife still a knife, a fork still a fork. So the emblems and signs of royalty are produced, the gilded spurs, the blued steel sword, like a sliver of deep space drawn from the scabbard of night to punish and protect. Bracelets to each wrist, sincerity and wisdom, both armour and bond. Love is still love is still love, and war is war. And indestructible towers will atomise in a blink. The god particle will be flushed from its hiding place. The sound barrier will twang with passenger planes. Civilization will graft its collected thoughts onto silicon wafers. Laureates will trip through court. But Taurus, the bull, on its heavenly tour, will breach the same horizon at the given hour. Queenhood. It is the skies, it is also the soil of the land. It is life behind glass walls and fortified stones. Robe and stole are lifted onto your shoulders, both shield and yoke. Motherhood and womanhood will be taken as red. Multitasking will be canonized as a new word. It is an honor in, but also an honor. In the flare and blur of an old film, ghostly knights and chess piece bishops deliver the unearthly orb with its pearled equator and polished realms into your open palm, and pass you the scepter and rod of mercy and justice, one bearing the cross, one plumed with a white dove, and load your fourth finger with a ring that makes you the nation's bride, and offer the white kid glove with its scrollwork tattoo of thistles and shamrocks, oak leaves and acorns, then finally furnish your head with the crown, jeweled with history, dense with glory, both owned and loaned at the same time. Do those burnished relics still hold the fingerprints of a 27-year-old? A priceless freight for a young woman to bear, but draped and adorned, a monarch walks forward into the sideways weather of oncoming years, and the heavy cargoes of church and state lighten with each step, syrupy old gold transmuted to platinum, alchemy redefined. Queenhood, it is law and lore, the dream life and the documentary, a truthful fantasy. For generations, we will not know such majesty. In London, Ruhi Khan, for Mojo Story. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.